Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at some trigonometric integrals, powers of sine x and or cosine x. So we'll start with the cosine cubed of x dx. So there's a difference when you have an even power or an odd power. In this case, we do have an odd power first. So what do we do? Uh, we're going to split it up. So the way we split it up is we're going to take one of the cosines and just separate it. The reason we do that is, you'll see in a little bit, but let me just go ahead and remind you real quick here, the integral of cosine x dx to the first power is going to be sine x, because this comes from the fact that, of course, plus c, this comes from the fact that the derivative of sine x is cosine, and the integral of sine x dx is going to be negative cosine of x plus c, because as you know, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so the derivative of negative cosine is going to be positive sign. That's why. Okay, cool. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to split this up into cosine squared of x times cosine of x dx. Now, the reason we do that is because we want to use the u substitution here. And in order to be able to do that, we're going to use the Pythagorean identity. And I think I should also write that down. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Now, this allows you to write cosine squared x in terms of sine squared x and vice versa. So you're able to write one in terms of the other, which is pretty cool because a lot of times we're going to be doing these transformations. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace the cosine squared with one minus sine squared. And then that, that is being multiplied by cosine of x dx. Now at this point, do not distribute. I mean, you can go ahead and distribute. It won't be the, it'll be the same thing, but I just like to keep it this way. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the u substitution. But what is u? Well, let me tell you what the u is before I tell you what the u is. Therefore, you can just kind of integrate that, right? Just like the integration by parts. But anyway, so in this case, our uh, cosine x dx is going to be the du. Therefore, u will be sine x. Okay? u will be sine x. du would be cosine x dx. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and do the replacements. This is going to give us the integral of 1 minus u squared du. And obviously, this is a polynomial, uh, super easy to integrate. You should know the rules. Like one of the first rules that you learn, x to the power n, the integral of x to the power n, of course, with the exception of n equals negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and integrate that. What was the rule for this? Well, you guys, uh, you just write the u for 1. That's kind of easy. And then for the u squared, you can just go ahead and Increase the power and divide by that power. Okay, that's what it is. So this is going to be our answer. And now I, I have to back substitute. What is u? u is equal to sine x. So if I go ahead and back substitute that, I'm going to be getting sine x minus sine cubed of x divided by 3 plus c. And that is going to be the integral of what? Cosine cubed x. Okay. I know this is kind of hard to believe, but... If you go ahead and differentiate that expression, you'll be getting cosine cubed of x, of course, after some simplifications. All right, so that was the odd power of cosine. And same thing goes for the odd power of sine. Even if it's like a fifth power, you can still do it. Okay, and you'll see that in a little bit. Now, what happens if we have an even power? And I wanted to start off with something simpler, uh, second power. So. What we're going to use here is there's a lot of formulas in trigonometry, right? And they kind of uh, can be written in terms of each other. Most of the time, we have the sum to product, product to sum, uh, and then, you know, sum formulas, difference formulas, double angle, half angle, so on and so forth. But basically, one of the most important formulas that you need to remember, and actually there's three of them, right? Cosine 2x. Okay, what is cosine 2x equal to? Well, cosine 2x is equal to cosine squared x, minus sine squared x. Great. Okay. What else? Well, remember, we said that using the Pythagorean relationship, we can replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. So if you do that, cosine 2x can be written as 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Or it can be written, if you replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared, then it can be written as 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Now, what is good about this? Well, this allows you, and we're going to use the second one here, this actually allows you to write cosine squared, and this is called reduction of powers, because what you do here is actually uh, you're able to 
reduced to power. So it's going to look like this. 1 plus cosine of 2x divided by 2. Awesome. So if I go ahead and replace the cosine squared with that, that's going to give me 1 half of 1 plus cosine of 2x dx. Awesome. Now, so what I was able to do here was by doing that replacement, I was actually able to reduce the power from a square to the first power. And as you know, any trigonometric function, basically, especially sine and cosine, can be easily integrated in the first power. So, 1 half is going to stay. Let's go ahead and integrate 1. That is going to be x, right? 1 dx is x. How do you integrate cosine 2x? Well, think about cosine x first. The integral of cosine x is sine x, right? But when you differentiate sine x, you get cosine x. What about maybe it's sine 2x? Well, if you differentiate sine 2x, you get 2 times cosine 2x. So what we need to do is we, go, we need to introduce an extra 1 half here to make up for the 2 that comes from the chain rule, obviously. So that's going to be that. And if you go ahead and distribute this, the integral of cosine squared x dx is going to equal 1 half of x plus 1 fourth of sine 2x plus c. That's going to be the answer. As you see here, uh, with the second power, we just used the formula, transformed it into a first power, and then we're able to do it. What if you had fourth power? I can actually go ahead and look at, uh, show that later, but you would do this twice. You would square the square, and then you would get more and more powers. Okay? I don't want to keep this too long, so let's go ahead and take a look at another problem, and then we'll finish with that, with that one. Okay? All right, please let me know if, in the comment section if you have any questions or you want me to continue doing these kinds of videos or anything like this, please let me know. And I'm thinking about alternating these videos, not like doing this every day, but we will continue with the geometry puzzles every other day. And then time to time, we're going to be doing some algebra or calculus like this. Okay? Awesome. Let's take a look at our third problem, which is sine to the fourth power. Now, I was just mentioning the fourth power, right? Okay, so I think this will be a good balance. So what we're going to do here is we do have the fourth power, but we have to use squares. Because the formulas we have, if you remember them, sine squared x can be written as 1 minus cosine 2x divided by 2, right? And cosine squared x can be written 1 plus cosine 2x divided by 2. But all I need is sine squared, so don't worry about the other one. So, but I do have sine to the fourth power. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to write it as sine squared squared. Awesome. That's great, right? Okay. Now, at this point, I'm going to replace sine squared with that. So let's go ahead and do it. 1 minus cosine of 2x divided by 2. And the whole expression is squared with dx. Okay. Now, how do you square a quotient? Obviously, you need to square the numerator and the denominator. But the denominator is just going to be a 1 fourth. So I can just go ahead and pull that out and expand the top. So that's going to give me 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x dx. Awesome. Now, what's interesting about this problem is that we use the, you know, half angle or double angle formula, whatever you want to use it, to reduce the power. But we ended up getting a cosine squared. So what am I going to do? Well, it looks like I'm going to use the formula here. Cosine squared x was written as 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2. So now the question is, how do you write this same formula for cosine squared 2x? Well, same thing. You just got to replace x with 2x. So the right-hand side of this equation is just going to be 1 plus cosine of 4x over 2. So the idea here is this angle is going to be half of this angle all the time. Okay? These are the original formulas. You can work off of that. Awesome. So let's go ahead and do that uh, substitution here. So what I can do is I can just go ahead and substitute for cosine squared 2x 1 plus. So I can just write it as 1 half multiplied by 1 plus cosine of 4x. And then the whole thing will be dx. Awesome. So let's go ahead and distribute this a little bit and to get a nicer expression. I'm going to be getting a 1 half from there. So that's just going to be 1 fourth with the outside. 1 plus 1 half is going to be 3 halves. Then I'll get minus 2 cosine of 2x plus 1 half of cosine 4x dx. Awesome. We're almost done. Let's get it done. So in this point, at this point, what I can do is I can just go ahead and integrate because everything is in the first power. 
the integral of 3 halves is 3 half of x. Now think about the integral of cosine 2x, but it was sine 2x, but now this has the 2, so it's just going to be sine of 2x. And, okay, let's say you're not sure if you integrate it correctly. Go ahead and differentiate if you get the original function. Awesome. What is the integral of cosine of 4x? Well, that should be 1 half is going to stay. It will be 1 fourth of sine 4x, so we'll, we'll get a 1 fourth here, sine of 4x. And actually what I can do is I can just go ahead and distribute this whole thing and consider that this is going to be 1 eighth. So if you go ahead and multiply these, this is going to be 3 eighths of x minus 1 fourth of sine 2x. 1 eighth multiplied by 1 fourth is going to be 1 over 32 multiplied by sine of 4x plus c. And that is the conclusion of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And see you in the next one, which is going to be a geometry puzzle. Take care. Bye-bye.